So today we're going to cover M62, which is a globular cluster. And like all the other globular clusters in our galaxy, in the Messier catalog, uh, it's a collection of old stars orbiting far above um, the outskirts of our galaxy. Except that this one isn't so far above the outskirts of our galaxy. It's actually quite close into the galactic center. It's only 6,000 light years away from the center of our galaxy. So it's actually closer to the center of our galaxy than it is to us. We're about two thirds of the way to the edge of our galaxy. And you can think of the galaxy as being more like a fried egg than just a disk. So it's a, it's a disk of stars, but it's got a bulge in the middle. And M62 is just sort of on the edge of that bulge, so to speak. Because all of these globular clusters, like everything else in the galaxy, have orbits that take them around the galaxy, sometimes through the plane of the galaxy. Uh, and in this case, M62 is very close to passing um, through, or has passed through, I don't know, uh, the, the, the galactic center. So these globular clusters, which I always think of as these kind of lone wolves outside the disk, sometimes they come sweeping through the disk, do they? They do, and they're not unaffected by that process. They uh, are subject to all the tidal gravitational forces that everything else in the galaxy is, and that can have a, a real effect on them. Um, and that's what we see in the case of M62. The interesting thing I found about M62 was its shape. It's actually quite elongated, so it's not it's not this beautiful spherical blob that you think of as most globular clusters. You can actually visibly see that the concentration of stars at the center is offset from the rest of the globular cluster. So it's actually being affected by the gravity of the galaxy. It's being tidally distorted by the gravity of the galaxy. And you can see that in other globular clusters. So a famous globular cluster is Palomar 5, which is not actually part of the Messier catalog. And in that case, you can see even more extreme tidal streams of stars being stripped out of this globular cluster, both in front and behind it, because of its passage close through the disk of the galaxy. M62 is about 21,000 light years away. And so on the sky, it's about 15 arc minutes in diameter. And to give you an illustration of what that is, I've got a five pence piece here. So we're in the UK, but it's not dissimilar. It's a little thicker than a dime, but about the same size uh, from North America. And 15 arc minutes is just about the thickness of that coin if I were to extend my arm at arm's length. So if we were to go out and look for M62 on the sky, it would be pretty small. It would be that tiny little thickness, uh, this little fuzzy blob, and we'd need to use binoculars or telescope to find it. However, if we were sitting at the galactic center and ignoring the fact that we'd be in the vicinity of a supermassive black hole and a whole bunch of stars, if we had a clear line of sight to um, M62, it would be that much closer that it would actually be about that big on the sky. And if you could see it, you'd get this beautiful view of this lovely collection of stars uh, hanging up there in the sky. Turn the handle, day to night, you see those cogs turning? As the Earth spins, Venus is very slowly sweeping around its orbit, getting closer and closer to that moment when it transits in front of our golden sun. Wow. Seriously, I love this thing. I think, I think if the Royal Society was on fire, which I hope never happens, this would be one of the things I would grab. 